Hey everyone, how's it going? So let's talk today about the various types of for loops. I'm going to be going over these three different types of for loops. That's the regular for loop with this kind of three part syntax that you see here. I'm also going to be talking about the for each method and the for of, it's a little bit of a newer method here. So roughly speaking, they're all gonna do a very similar thing. And that's gonna be either uh, iterating over the elements in an array or um, counting some set of elements in some sense. So let's take a look first at the for loop. And this is kind of an odd syntax if you're not used to seeing this sort of three part syntax here. Uh, what we have going on is First, the declaration of a local variable, a variable that is scoped, uh, the block scoped, we would say. It's scoped to the for loop itself, meaning we can't use it. We can't use i here outside of the for loop. Um, and this is basically going to be a counter in some sense. Uh, now, in the second bit here, we have a condition that we are checking every time this loop runs. So every time the loop runs through, we're checking whether this condition is still true. And if it is, then we enter the block scope of the for loop. And now this third part here is, this is called a unary operator, this plus plus here. Basically what this is saying is after the contents of the, the block scope of the for loop have run their course on any given iteration of the loop, we will increment i by one. This is a shorthand way of saying increment i by one. So what is kind of good about the for loop, right? So we are not iterating over the elements of the array themselves. We're actually iterating over their accompanying indices, right? So really, when we're thinking about object-oriented programming, OOP, uh, what is an array in JavaScript? An array in JavaScript really is actually an object where we will have these enumerated uh, key values. So um, these will essentially point to uh, the indexes, the indices of the elements themselves. Um, so in this case, right, so our first, the first element in this array is a one. So we're gonna say at index zero, we have one. At index one, we have a two and so on and so forth. So when we're looking at arrays in JavaScript, really we're looking at objects. It's just not, uh, it's not clearly visible that the indexes are there. Um, so what we're doing when we are referencing uh, this I variable, we're gonna use that to reference the indices of the elements of the array. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at really what we're doing here inside of this function. So I've declared a function, it takes in an array and we are going to create a new array and we are going to loop over this input array. And for each element in that input array, we are going to take that element, which in this case just happens to be numbers. We're going to multiply that number by two and push it into our new array here. So this is kind of a you know, very basic implementation of the for loop. Now where the for loop gets interesting is that with a for loop, we don't necessarily have to iterate over every single element of the array. We can potentially choose to uh, start not necessarily at the first index of the array, or rather the zeroth index of the array. We don't necessarily have to start there. We can start at in any index of the array that we want. We can start at the at index two. We could start at index, you know, we could, we could calculate uh, ha the halfway point of the array and start there and go to the end. We can even, with a for loop, we can even go from the end back to the front in reverse order. Or we can do things like starting at the first index, or again, the zeroth index, and iterate over every other element in the array. That, if we wanted to do something like that, we could do um, i plus equals two, let's say. Something else that the for loop is good for is that we can break out of the loop early if we wanted to. If let's say we were writing a loop which iterates over an array of numbers and we are looking for the number five, let's say, if it finds the number five halfway through the array, we can say at that point, okay, let's break out early 
and not have to continue looking for this element in the other elements of the array that we have already found. Now let's compare this to the for each loop. So this is basically the exact same function, just written using a for each loop instead. Uh, we have a new array being declared. We are using this for each method. It's going to be a higher order function. Uh, we're using that to iterate over again the in this well really in this case the elements themselves of the array rather than their indices. So that's kind of one of the main key differences, right? So we're iterating over the elements themselves of the array that we call it on, and for each is a higher order function. It takes in a callback function. Inside of that callback function, it has one required parameter. That parameter is going to be a label for each element that we are looking at in the loop, right? So on any given iteration of the for each loop, we can choose to call this whatever we want. I've just chosen to call it num because we are working with numbers. So same thing again here, we're just taking the value of that particular number that we are currently looking at, multiplying it by two and pushing it into the new array. And then at the very end, we are returning that new array. So same exact thing we saw before with the regular for loop here, just using the array method for each. Now, arguably for each can be a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner to work with uh, because we have this uh, named variable to work with here. Now you'll notice in the previous example, I actually did that for myself. I took based on the index that we are currently looking at and the array itself, I calculated, okay, this points to the current element that we are looking at. So I actually created a variable for it, just called it current element. Um, so we get that kind of nice semantic naming there. Now, something to note about for each, and for that matter, any array methods in JavaScript, uh, they will iterate over every single element of the array from front to back, regardless. There's no way to break out early. Uh, there's no way to affect, you know, skipping elements or starting at the halfway point. Um, it is kind of rigid in that sense. Now, something else to note about the regular for loop is that uh, we could potentially have what's called an off by one error. Now that would be if we had, instead of uh, looping to all the way to the end of the array, if we had actually gone one element further, in other words, gone to the end of the array and then one element outside of the array and tried to you know, calculate whatever that value is, what we're gonna see outside of the array. So in this case, if I'm working with an array of four elements, that fifth element, you can imagine it being somewhere out here, right? That's actually gonna be undefined. So what we would see is if we tried to do something like i is less than or equal to array length, and we tried to go through this whole logic here, we would likely see an undefined value pushed into the new array. So something to watch out for. Now, something else that's nice about using these uh, array methods is that we can actually take many of them in sequence and chain them. So for example, and this makes more sense in the context of using map, filter, and reduce. Uh, these are all sort of the, uh, some. these are some of the higher order functions that will automatically return a new array for each itself doesn't return anything. But with map and filter and reduce, we can chain them so that we could potentially you know, imagine we had, you know, something where we did array and we mapped over array and that returned some new array. And then we want to take that new array and we want to filter that new array, right? and filter will return a new array. And we wanted to you know, continue. We could keep chaining these as we need. Now going down to this third one, right? We have our for of loop. Again, same sort of function structure here. I am declaring a new array. I am looping over the new array using a for of syntax. So here I'm breaking out each element that we are currently looking at with a named variable. Here I'm just calling it num. And for each num, I'm multiplying it by two and pushing it into my new array. And then at the very end, I'm returning my new array. So a for of loop, this is a sort of a, a new-ish syntax at this point. It was um, introduced in 2015 with the ES6 spec. Uh, 
And what it allow you to do is iterate over any of what we call iterables in JavaScript. Those, those are arrays and strings. And the reason why those are called iterables is because they're built with something called iterators, which is beyond the scope of this video. Uh, but essentially what it allows you to do is take either a string or an array and iterate it over its elements in sequence and break them out one by one. And then, you know, use those elements in some way, whatever, whatever you want to do with them right here. I'm choosing to do this. Uh, four of loops again, are a little bit more rigid. They will automatically start at the beginning of the array and loop all the way until the end of the array forwards. Uh, unless we want to break out early. Again, we can break out early using the break keyword with four of loops. So to kind of wrap things up, right, you can kind of think of this as like a flow chart. At least this is what I do. So in order to know which one to use, right? So first thing you should ask is, okay, I have an array of data. Do I want to loop over every single element of the array? and not need to potentially break out. You should use a for each. If I need to do something else, if I need to, let's say I do need to break out early potentially, uh, you can use either a for of or a regular for loop. Um, they're pretty much interchangeable in that sense. Now, if you need some a little bit more customization, let's say you need to loop over only half, let's, let's say you only need to loop over part of an array, starting at maybe the middle element and going to the end, or you wanna loop over the array backwards, or you wanna loop over every other element, uh, or you need some other sort of like um, more fine-tuned customization, that's when you would reach for a regular for loop uh, and kind of tweak those three inner parts that we talked about. You would really only reach for a for of loop when you know that you want to loop over every element of the array. You could potentially need to break out. Um, you don't necessarily need to work with the indices of the elements themselves. Uh, and you kind of you know can take advantage of that nice semantic variable naming. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, all three of these will, roughly speaking, accomplish the same thing if you use them for sort of more general purposes. Um, so play around with each of them. Get familiar with what each's syntax is and how it works and the, the various moving pieces. Uh, and, you know, really from there, start to fine tune your decision making as far as does this particular loop implementation make sense for exactly what I'm trying to do in this particular scenario. Okay, I hope that's helpful. If you thought it was helpful, feel free to share it with a friend. Appreciate you watching. Have a good one.